In Toretsk, Ukrainian engineers are demolishing entire buildings filled with Russian troops. On the one hand, such a strategy is harsh, but on the other hand, it is effective in saving the city itself from the enemy. The enemy continues to advance despite heavy losses in both manpower and military equipment. Putin's army is already in the area of Pokrovsk and Kurokovo, Forbes reports. However, there is a city where the enemy has stopped for some reason. This is Toretsk, south of Pokrovsk. Before the war, 35,000 people lived in Toretsk. The Ukrainian armed forces managed not only to hold the defense, but also to recapture entire neighborhoods from the enemy. In early October, keen observers of satellite images, drones and videos posted online noticed something unusual happening in the center of Toretsk, where Ukrainian brigades and Russian regiments had been engaged in brutal urban fighting for weeks. One of the OSINT analysts drew attention to the pattern of attacks by the Ukrainian armed forces on enemy positions in the central part of the city. The footage showed both long-range strikes and close combat. Soldiers from the 101st Brigade collected a number of shots that show street fighting. The video shows drones striking Russian troops hiding in the entryways, apartments and on rooftops near the high-rise buildings. One drone observed Russian infantry retreating after a failed local counter-attack. The occupiers fortified at least one high-rise, forcing the Ukrainian armed forces to begin blowing up all high-rise buildings. The occupiers from the 109th Motorized Regiment were trapped in one of these high-rise buildings. One of the Russian Armed Forces officers said that he was in one of the buildings and that he himself was crushed by a concrete slab. For the Ukrainians, raising the city to the ground to save it is a Pyrrhic victory. But if the destruction of Toretsk is the price of partially reversing the Russian advance along this axis, the Ukrainians will gladly pay it. The alternative is another Ukrainian retreat, which would allow the occupiers to seize even more settlements. The battles for Toretsk will not save Kurokovo and Pokrovsk. However, experts say this is a hint to the commanders of these cities on how to deal with a large number of enemy soldiers. The plan is clear. Bomb the occupiers with drones, attack with infantry, and demolish every building the enemy can turn into a defense position. Recently, Russian invaders have increasingly besieged populated areas of Ukraine with indirect fire. The fact is that the occupiers do not manage to capture villages and cities in the traditional way. The focus of the Russian army's new tactics is concentrated around specific settlements in the Donetsk region, emphasizing the ruthless nature of their approach. The complexity and devastation of the Russian army's new tactics highlight the brutal realities faced by the populations in the conflict-affected regions of Ukraine. Despite the ongoing challenges, the defense forces in Ukraine are steadfast in defending captured territories and countering the aggressive advances of the Russian army. Recently, Yannick Kesselman, deputy head of Estonian intelligence, said that October will be one of the bloodiest months of the war for the Russians. The scout drew attention to the fact that the Russian army does not stop its advance along the entire front line, but local successes of the enemy are possible only against the background of constant massive shelling and so-called meat assaults. Yannick Kesselman voiced the assumption that in October, the losses of the Russian invaders could again be insane, and this month it seems as one of the largest in terms of losses for Russia. According to our estimates, the enemy will lose about 40,000 servicemen, both wounded and killed, within a month, he stressed. As the Estonian intelligence officer noted, the main focus of the Russian army is concentrated around the settlements of Zeleny and Korokov in the Pokrovsky direction in Donetsk region. According to Kesselman's data, more and more often the Russian occupiers began to resort to tactics in which they do not directly enter populated areas. The main reason is that it requires more complex training and self-organization from them. Therefore, they besiege settlements with indirect fire. After the settlement is surrounded, they simply destroy it, a very cynical and disgusting thing explained the scout. According to him, the Russian army has moved forward in the area of Chasiv Yar and is trying to storm even more actively the positions of the armed forces of Ukraine in the Lyman direction. Israeli authorities said Tuesday one person was killed after a projectile launched from Lebanon slammed into a northern city. The Israeli military said about 50 projectiles were launched from Lebanon into Israel. 
It said some of the launches were intercepted by Israel's aerial defense system and others fell in the area. Israeli police said they received a number of reports of fallen projectiles which caused damage to property, in the city of Malat Tarshiha. The Israeli rescue service Megan David Adam said a man was killed in the strike. The Lebanese militant group Hezbollah said it fired rockets toward the area. Hezbollah has fired thousands of rockets into Israel since October 8 last year, when it began attacking Israel in solidarity with Hamas a day after its cross-border attack. Fighting between Israel and Hezbollah has intensified in recent weeks after Israel launched a ground invasion into Lebanon.